here we go. February 3rd, first meeting of the month. I'm punching four trustees. Welcome, everyone. Um, three trustees, fiscal officer, fire chief, road administrator. Um, oh, Mac, we got everybody here tonight. Uh, uh, Inspector General Saw and valued member of the fourth estate. Well, that's where old. I would uh, entertain a motion for the adoption of the minutes of January 22nd, 2020. I'm sorry, I have not seen them. Okay, oh. then I guess we will, by a lack of quorum, we will put that off till uh, our right. next meeting. So I would entertain a motion to approve payment of bills, the amount of uh, $30,792.76. <laughs> Broken down general funds, $3,605.05. Fire fund fourteen thousand three hundred fifty four dollars seventy six cents. Cemetery fund two hundred thirty nine dollars and ninety five cents. EMS billing eight thousand five hundred three dollars sixty one cents. Road bridge two thousand seven hundred and six dollars and five cents. And back to capital project zero. Just like the good old days. <laughs> Is there a motion? I would move that we approve payment of those bills. Is there a second? I second that. Motion and a second. Any further discussion regarding payment of these accounts? Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Uh, correspondence with this period, which was quite light. Uh, Economic Sustainability Commission meeting uh, reminder and addition to minutes for the February 5th meeting. Um, but I am confused because I understand it at the last village council meeting, they disbanded the Economic Sustainability Commission um, meetings or postponed them or put them on a hiatus or something mm -hmm. uh, due to the uh, um, soon to be active Nova Springs Development Corporation. They did. So who knows? They considered it, maybe. They considered it. Well, the hiatus. I, I saw that they did do it, but yeah. I never know. Okay, and we have an um, email from Karen Wolford at the um, Senior Citizens Center uh, regarding the meeting that was held on January 29th, and um, they were sorry that we weren't there. They have to schedule another meeting, and there are uh, um, there's notes from, from that meeting. So, Mark, you might want to uh, review those since that's kind of your... <coughs> Place. Well, of course, both of them are yours, but mm -hmm. the first one doesn't exist. We don't care. We have a copy of a letter, form letter, that was sent to uh, all our zoning commission members uh, asking if they would be interested in, in becoming the second township representative on the Yellow Springs uh, Development Corporation Board. Uh, I heard from a couple of those folks. It was nice of them to get back. Uh, email from Alan Stock, the administrator of Xenia Township, notifying that uh, uh, Xenia Township, their projects have been approved from FEMA and to the state EMA board uh, for the tornado event of 2019. And uh, because we assisted them in a small amount of the work, we will be compensated uh, in the amount of $4,282.51. And I doubt that'll go directly to Dan, but uh, just maybe <laughs> indirectly it'll, it'll go to Dan. Uh, we have a copy of the uh, Monthly League of Women Voters, the Voter Newsletter. We have a copy of the, uh, probably the most recent Zoning Commission um, minutes from September 17th, 2019. It is the probably most the most recent, yes. <laughs> um, copy of uh, uh, an email that was sent to me from um, uh, uh, Beaver Creek Township Trustee Pete Bales, uh, who also just so happened to have been a, uh, uh, a, a uh, finalist for the village manager position, uh, offering his services for things we're not going to do. It was nice and off, I think it was. Uh, any, a letter from uh, Robert Sprague, the new Ohio treasurer, congratulating me, uh, my election. I got one too. Oh, oh congratulating you too. Well, good for you. And and, uh, and encouraging Margaret and I to 
get a hold of Marcy Langenecker, the regional liaison for Southwest Ohio, and uh, she would come and visit us and talk about giving us some money, I guess. What? <laughs> <Wow. laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm I'm boy. You, didn't, you didn't read it that way? Well, yeah, no. Um, a, uh, um, a mail out from Green County Public Health Board, Board of Health about their uh, meeting in February 6th to, to come uh, in minutes of their February. Well, even if they're not, they should be. And there's also going to be a uh, open house tomorrow morning from 11 to something. <coughs> To celebrate what 150 100 years? I thought it was 100 years. 100 years of community service by the health department. Uh, I think that's applaudable, and we shall do that. We have a, a grassroots clipping newsletter from the Have Township Association. We have an envelope quote for government government forms and supplies for new envelopes, and we have an email that's from. Uh, the Ohio Deferred Compensation, and they're going to tell us all about <laughs> Dan's, Dan's deferrals. And he's the only one that I know of, so, so, so that's for you. Are there any other, or is there, is there any other correspondence in or out? Hearing none, we'll move to the uh, since the last meeting, 12 days ago, there were 30 EMS incidents for which were in Bath Township. The last meeting you attended or the last meeting of the board? Of the board. Okay, I just want to make sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, 15 incidents, fire incidents, three of which were in Bath Township. Uh, two incidents of note, both were pretty much the exact same thing. Uh, drivers who apparently may have been under the influence of alcohol. On two separate nights, lost control of their vehicles and careened through utility poles, taking yeah. out, taking out power. Um, crews were unable to get the patients right away because they had a lot of power lines on their cars, so you had to wait for a, a DPNL in one and then village crews on the other. Um, both patients were transported to Soin Medical Center with minor injuries, um, usually crashing their vehicle completely through a utility pole would cause major injuries. Or being apparently under the influence of alcohol puts you in a state where you don't get that. <laughs> um, so odd that that happened. Same to it, so, yeah. same I've gone my entire career never had uh, line. They tell us about that EMT class constantly. A lot of that. Never. Until two nights in a row. <laughs> um, the first guy on 343 was actually trapped in the car, so once they got the power off, they had to cut the car open and get him out. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Neither of these guys tried to get out of it. Right. Yeah, thank God. Uh, this guy was um, in good spirits. He was that type of <laughs> drunk. Um, <clears throat> the second night gentleman was not that cooperative and uh, um, threatened to sue our crew, the police, public works guys. According to Jason, who was working at the ER that night, uh, the doc, and one of the nurses. Um, Throw them all in there. And uh, he, uh, he became a little unruly en route to the hospital, so they had to request uh, the Soin Campus Police kneel at the door. So I think he's going to sue them too. I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, and both, you know, power was out to the swath of the township for several hours yeah. on the DPNL one. And village crew amazingly got the power back on for most people within two hours that night, but they were out until six in the morning, these poor guys. So. Um, but they did, both guys, both DPNL. The village crews don't have the job, so mm -hmm. big thanks to them. Yeah. Oh, what happens if you're transporting someone and they become unruly? Um, there are many different options. Um, I mean, if they have an IV, you can sedate them. If you have to you're allowed to do that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, they teach us in class, you can pull over and get out. <laughs> they get out. They can get out. Um, go. Get out. Um, usually, my experience is they're already strapped down, so you can just keep the straps tight, get to the hospital, and usually the police will be waiting. Yeah, I see, okay. Um, so they're secured enough that they're not going to cause a problem within yeah. the ambulance. Uh, 
we, I mean, I can think of only one instance where we had a guy who unbuckled himself um, and got up out of the ambulance and tried to assault one of the crew members. Um, they were transporting to Kettering Hospital. The guy insisted he had to go to Kettering. Um, so we, uh, it was right in front of Trader Joe's, actually. So we pulled the ambulance over, called dispatch, request Kettering police, and uh, if you ever have to have an emergency, Kettering's the place to do it, because those yeah. cops were on scene, <laughs> five officers on scene within two minutes. Um, he tried to get himself shot, too. Wow. No. You know, he was all like, eh, shoot me, and the first officer was like, I'm not going to shoot you. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I already had my target practice. Yeah. Today. So they got him back, calmed down in the ambulance, rode with us to Kettering. Oh. Dropped him off, and as we were leaving, uh, a whole bunch of police guys came screaming in because apparently he flipped out again and <laughs> started to attack a doctor. So um, usually people aren't that angry with us. Oh, okay. um, and if they are, we can have a police officer come with us too, or follow. Either way, that usually helps. So, so it's a little more common than I might have expected. <laughs> uh, it's becoming more and more common, uh, unfortunately. It used to be no one bothered us; everyone loved us, and now mm -hmm. people they're just pain in the ass. But. Uh, <laughs> Fire Marshal Training Reimbursement Grant that I briefed you, well, my memo briefed you on last time has been submitted, so keep all your collective fingers crossed for $1,750. So apparently it's okay to say ass on camera now because everybody said last night's Super Bowl halftime was the half ass time. <laughs> <laughs> I would just like to point out that what did the NFL think? If you're gonna one, you're in Miami. Yeah. Two, you got Shakira. Three, you got Jennifer Lopez. Uh -huh. Did you think they were gonna be in full dresses? Yeah, right. <laughs> I thought it was a good show. <laughs> and the topic before us. Oh, my next thing is actually the Super Bowl. <laughs> um, Sorry, I jumped the gun. <laughs> Voluntary recruiting and retention, 3,900 plus mailer cards have been sent to residences throughout the township and our chunk of Bath. Um, I don't want to say imploring, but inviting people to come to a volunteer open house on the 25th. Uh, we're also going to do social media advertising, flyers, and uh, I'll speak with the Fourth Estate about an article maybe in the paper. Um, we're, you know, we're, we're at a desperate point that we really need extra volunteers or additional volunteers. Otherwise, we're going to have to fill those slots with part-time people. People don't like that because taxes go up. So, um, but we are at a, I mean, we're in a really serious position. So, yeah. hopefully, so people will come in. The open house will be in the evening? Yes, Tuesday, February 25th from 7 p.m. Put that in the calendar. <coughs> Snacks will be served. Are Jennifer and what's her name coming to the open house? Secure. Secure. <laughs> if it helps, if it helps oh, get recruits. Oh, we have Miami temperatures. I know. If it helps get recruits, <laughs> I'm <laughs> doing. Um, I'm on vacation from February 14th through the 18th in Colorado. I'll take them all with you. Um, probably back on the 19th, and then I leave two days later to go to the National Park. I'll travel. Tough life. It is. It is. <laughs> work, work, work. Well, I mean, the downside of the National Park, I mean, I've got to drive six hours with Jason and Holly in the cars. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> there is that. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I did want to have an executive session, but then I realized that I'm nowhere near at the point to ask what's the fuck you doing about that. So disregard the executive session. Okay. And, so, um, so, 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 <laughs> so disregard it. And I do believe. We will be seeing um, multitudes of fire levy signs go up with or without the Alice DeWine signs that are already up. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what they're going to do with the Alice DeWine signs, but... Uh, there are other signs up. There are. Mm -hmm. On the guy. Hmm? I didn't see him. What's he right for? Commissioner. Oh. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. I don't know exactly where they are, but I saw a proof of the artwork mm -hmm. from Alex. Um, we can use our old signs. we got boxes of them. Don't they say support the fire levy or something like that? Uh, yeah, but I think Bob took them to Australia with them. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Bob, <laughs> so they're, they're upstairs in the garage. Uh, I'll mention that to them, but hopefully they have Aren't they? Room. Which main building or quantity? No, no, the main building. In the storage room upstairs. Yeah, 
They had been, but I don't know what happened to them, so okay. I'll double check with them. They had been. If not, there were already new ones. They're probably there. If they were there was a debate there. about whether or not to put no new taxes or no tax increase, but then, they're like, well, then we can't use it every letter. <laughs> Most of the word. You know, really. <laughs> but anyway, they're doing that. And, uh, Alex has got a whole bunch of talking points for Darren to put on the website. Um, go to a certain house on Michael. Um, <laughs> Do we have... Uh, <laughs> Do we have new fire association officers, or is Brett still? Brett's still ruling with Iron Fist. Okay. Um, Brett will be here till the end of April, or the early April, mm -hmm. before he retires. Um, and he has, when I mentioned about officer, you know, association officers, he said he has a plan. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was very um, Cluzo esque. But, you know. mm -hmm. So we'll see. Nebulous, perhaps. Yes. But there's a plan. <laughs> Good. I'm not sure, Chris, but you may be coming to the same I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> Great things are going. Um, <laughs> Medic 82 suspension. Well, we don't like to speak of it. Um, <laughs> well, we, we would. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we brought it back from uh, Horton and Columbus, and um, it seems to be fixed. Really? Yes, it seems to be because. Uh, this is a hydraulic. Yeah. The thing that they replaced. So it didn't. We drove it out there. When I left here with it, it was leaning. Mm -hmm. Once you run it, it you know, levels off. Mm -hmm. Got to Columbus, parked it, talked to the guys. Oh, hey, okay, great. So a week later, I called, like, what the hell's going on? Like, well, Chief, i got to tell you, it hasn't done it. Mm -hmm. It's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. We've driven it. we put it inside. we put it outside. You know, covered it with a blindfold and all these <laughs> things. So it wasn't until a week, two weeks, because I told the guy, just keep it until it does it. So they came back in on Martin Luther King Day for their shift. Lo and behold, it was leaning. So, um, they had to replace uh, the isolation valves that control the hydraulic fluid, the filters that go with those, uh, because there was some kind of contaminant in the hydraulic fluid, and they flushed the system. I think they've done that three times. Which is exactly okay. what Dave had done um, in consultation with the manufacturer. So maybe this time's the charm. Okay. But I got the guy said. Hopefully not to curse it, but if you have any other problems, call me back. Hopefully. How long has it been here? Been back? The Friday of Martin Luther King Day week. Okay. Is that, what is that, a week and a half, maybe? Mm -hmm. so, so far, so good. Did it ever sit in here for a week and a half and not start Oh, God, no. No, we'd come back from Eatlands like 12 minutes later and be like, ha! <laughs> <laughs> um, so... I don't know. It's also a bizarre thing because it's it's a very common system. It's not like we went to some weird state of the art. Very common. It's used extensively on RVs. But since we started having this problem, we've learned that other ambulances have had, with that system have had the same problem. Hmm. Um, people had to have one or two that did it. And, uh, it was Riverside had one. And so what were their repairs? One was what we had done to ours. The other one, they had replaced the entire wiring harness that controls the system. Maybe that's next. We'll see. Hopefully not. Hopefully it's good to go. The poor medicated one is just you know, <laughs> tired. Look, <laughs> I'm 15 guys. years old. Leave me alone. It just seems odd that it would tilt because the fluid was there. Why wouldn't it tilt the other way? Or, or? Yeah, something about the valves getting stuck because yeah. there's con <coughs> dirt. Though I mean, Dave or um, Ian, yeah, the, the random or it's always the same ones. Yeah, I don't know. It's very well. It has leaned both ways. Oh, okay. yeah. It likes to go to the Passenger right. side, but every now and then we'd find it going to the driver's side, so just because you know. Hey. So. From your experience, how many? Uh, uh, let's, let's start with how many outgoing calls do you think are made from the Clifton telephone per month? Maybe two, if that. How many incoming calls on the Clifton telephone? Uh, in my career, I've received two. I mean, that's just me. Maybe it's ringing a lot when I'm not there, but. Would, would you guess that most of the people who are there uh, inside the building may have a uh, personal communication device? I would venture that that is a safe guess nowadays. Would, would you entertain the notion of uh, discontinuing that phone service? I would not object because I don't think anyone actually would notice it. You don't have any kind of alarm system. No. Oh, gosh, no. 
I know that's one reason that people keep the plane in line. Yeah, no, there's, um, almost everyone has a, I mean, everyone has a cell phone nowadays. Whether or not you've got good service in the building is another issue. It's like a black hole, but I mean, you can overcome that by stepping aside. And if we're just going, we can put a radio there, too. <coughs> you know, if you're trapped under some weights or something, you can go for mm -hmm. now. Um, do we have a decommissioning plan for that building as of October 1? Um, the plan is um, we were we're going to work with Cedarville Township Fire uh -huh. and just put training props in the building. Um, I mean, it costs us about without the phone now actually. <laughs> it's about two thousand bucks a year to run the place. Mm -hmm. It was a furnace. Actually, it's, it's got the most efficient furnace we have in any of the yeah, buildings here. So shocking. Um, and water and sewer is not a well, there's no sewer. Water is uh, not expensive. But we're, or so there is sewer. There's no water. So. Um, so the idea was to do a joint facility with Cedarville Township, uh, the training pop, props, that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, they can pay more. Yeah, they would help out. And they paid for part of the door that we got. Um, they're building a new bus station, so I don't know if they're going to be flush with money. But I hope so before the whole thing collapses into the. <laughs> do they uh, approve a new one for them finally? I think so. Well, Chief Miller's been begging basically. But that's that's why I'm just doing. Okay. Well, uh, okay, I just hope it doesn't cost us too much because money's getting tight, as you may know. Plus, it's got really nice bathrooms. It does have very nice bathrooms. It's like the nicest yeah. facility we have. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure the Clifton senior citizens appreciate that. Oh, so no, they, they pay for them, so. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so I'm sure they do. <laughs> um, okay. Um, oh, apparently I was remiss a few meetings ago, uh, where I had hoped that you would make an announcement concerning your uh, upcoming retirement. Oh, okay. Would you like to make any information, <laughs> give any information to the public and the private and anybody else? Okay, well, I'm retiring next week. Good night, you guys. Okay. See ya. Before you're making? No, um, well, my eligibility date for retirement is July 14th of this year, for those of you who are wondering, that it is in fact Bastille Day. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, mm -hmm. It has been for years. So. Yeah. Uh, instead of storming something in France, I'll probably storm the pension office. Um, sometime in April I can schedule a meeting with the pension board to determine what my options are, but my plan at this point, unless they shoot it all down, um, is to remain on the job for one more year and uh, experience at least on this new fire station. Mm -hmm. Taste it. Just taste it. Maybe help us find another a successor. Oh, no. you guys don't know. <laughs> Good luck! Uh, yeah, of course, yeah. Work on transition plan and all that kind of thing. Um, and of course, it's all up in the air, depending on what the pension people tell me. Um, a year from today? You said in a year. It'll be a year from July 14th, which. 2021. And my conversations with Chiefs who've retired, you never retire on your actual retirement. Usually two, three, four months lag, and it's afterwards. So. so you might make it all the way through 2021. It's entirely possible, yeah. Uh, you know, Scott Hall, when he was chief of Billbrook, and he was also working at Huber Heights and when he did his retirement, uh, it was six months, I think. After you retire, and then you use up your sick leave and your. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that's the other thing is there's a ton of sick leave and vacation time to burn off before then because we buy out a third of the sick leave, I think, or something like that. Three year old, yeah. <laughs> and then the vacation all goes away. So, mm -hmm. so while I may still be working here next year, it doesn't seem to be that same. Are you buy part of that too? Yeah, the current year. Oh right, I believe. Oh okay. Well, either way, I'll have stuff to burn off. Yeah, so I don't leave. So yeah. <clears throat> all right. Well, good. That's, that's, that is that is the announcement. That's that's good news for the board of trustees and the fist sponsor. Right. And, and we have been Rose discussing and, um, in officer meetings transition issues, and I've been putting, <laughs> I'm sure he's so excited about it, but I've been throwing a lot of resp more of my responsibilities on the Denny, um, who's been actually taking them willingly and not complaining too much. <laughs> so, Can I quote you on that? <laughs> well, I mean, he, he willingly took the fire station thing. He's very excited uh -huh. to you know, be our point person on that one. Um, he's going to be doing evaluations of the staff, mm -hmm. which is usually what I do. But, do you do you see someone coming up through the ranks, or do you see search? 
I think it always makes sense to do a search. That's regardless our, our decision. That's your decision. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's that's that. But listening to recommendations. I mean, my experience talking to other departments is even departments that have had a very clear cut candidate who said, "I want this job. I've been trying to get it for years. I'm here. Everyone loves me. Blah blah blah." Um, they always do a search just in case, you know. Super the second nice. super guy, well, you know, Barack Jesus Obama comes, comes in and wants to be your fire chief, um, which I would recommend to go with, just in case he does. You know, if he and Michelle are bored. Um, and I mean, I, you know, well, I don't know if I do, someone may have a conversation with Andy, too, and see what his interest level is, because sometimes it's going to be back and So, well, there's always Casey Brewer. True. You can just hold on another few years, he'll be perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Anything else for the uh, fire department? Hearing none, we'll move to the new firehouse report. New firehouse report. I hope people have looked at it uh, on, uh, on, and on and off. It's coming right along. We are still on budget. We are still on schedule. Barely. We're just like within a day or so of not being on schedule. <laughs> but uh, it's not to, they've lost six working days uh, so far due to weather. And, but there are, work, there are lost days uh, that were uh, uh, in the January schedule. And I believe there's substantial uh, open days in February to, to make up if you know, we had to for, for weather. Um, so we should be just fine there. All the suppliers, on schedule for delivery of all the things we need, the windows and the doors and the nuts and the bolts and the card readers and oh my god, there's you know, no end to any of that stuff, of course. Um, uh, knock on wood, everything is going well and everyone is working well together. Uh, we had a little pat on the back session last Thursday of how well we thought everyone was doing, and especially well, bodies. Uh, our selection of the WDC group in Springfield uh, to oversee the, uh, the construction and, and Jason, of course, specifically because he's the one doing it. And Jason Funderburg. Jason Funderburg, a local gentleman. And uh, we are extremely pleased with, uh, with his work. He has been on, he could not get any more on top of <coughs> what's going on. And uh, he, he, he juggles a lot of stuff. And, does it well. So, uh, we're plugging along and we're still on, on uh, schedule I, for, for Labor Day. Can I make one correction? You certainly may. You said knock on wood. I don't think there's any wood on the site. It's steel and concrete. Oh, that wood there, that site. Yeah, that's true. There, there isn't. Uh, there will be pretty soon because there are carpenters coming in to start working here. Okay. In, uh, in, you know, I think two weeks, he said. So, there'll be lots of wood. And uh, really? let's see, our meet, huh? What are the carpenters doing? I don't know. Something. What, whatever carpenters do. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they make things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they they might be setting the windows. windows. They nail things oh, together. Oh, window. For, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know all the walls are steel frame. The drywall may be categorized as as carpentry, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. We'll watch over the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Well, you're a, we're a ways away from trying to Yeah. Just make sure that stay on that for them. I you? know, I know. That's why I'm looking that up. <laughs> this Thursday will be our uh, next uh, payroll um, uh, certification day, and people will be paid. And as of last Thursday, uh, there, there was no problem with having this Thursday's bills being paid. So that's good, too. All right. Um, anything else for new fire? Okay. How about the um, cemetery? Cemetery. Yep. Well, we had two burials. Both at Glen Forest. They were ashes. Mm -hmm. yeah. The two Saturdays? Is that the one? Saturday, yeah. This past and the one before. Uh -huh. We've got one pending for clips, but I don't know. Sometime in the near future. Uh, let's see. 
Tell her that doesn't pay the bills. I'm going to try to maybe burn that pile I've got up here to keep the dead rain too much. And they do oak here. Yeah. What do you call it? Oak grove? Grove, yeah, oak grove. Addition. Try to get you know, some of that, some of it here. Mm -hmm. Try to grow up some dirt back there too. So it costs the graves. What about that dirt behind it? What is, what is that dirt behind the garage? I realize it's, it's wet too. It's topsoil, clay, it's yeah. wet. Yeah. 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 If it was a little drier, I could do some of that. Mm -hmm. If I can grow up some dry dirt. Is it, there's no value in tarping that? Well, keep, maybe keep it dry, but it's clay. Yeah. Being moist kind of helps it actually break down. And it's, and when it does dry out, it's a little more workable. Mm -hmm. Let's keep it up on the It's just leftover from the grain. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, but. After a while, it's going to be a mountain. Well, I, try, I try to get rid of some from time to time. Yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't get too big. Um, speaking of the garage and a mountain behind it, how come you don't train Jaws of Life anymore? Bust up cars and things? Oh, we do. I, I haven't seen a car I mean, back there in haven't years. Haven't for a year. Yeah, I mean, it's been at least a year. They spent time doing something in the spring. It used to be the, there was every time I turned around there was some <laughs> heap sitting back there. <laughs> yeah, heat, thinking oil all over the place. place. I have to smash them up for yeah. Uh, we're talking about that for the spring when we uh, switch our entire training schedule. Around, so okay. plus it'll be nicer weather. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess it's pretty nice now, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, you could you could you could almost have burnt up prairie grass today. Yeah, well, we've got more speed that's scheduled for this one. A little breezy for doing that. Yeah, probably. What about the uh, natural barrier? That's what you just said. Oh, you said more speed. Oh, you want the natural barrier done? Oh, absolutely. Again? Yeah, every year. Oh, every year. Oh, okay, it's usually every other. I mean, not for you well, guys, but prairies are usually every other year. Oh, you like that in every year? But we, no, didn't, we didn't burn it last year. I burned it late. You burned it late last year. Oh, we year. did? We, yeah. When you burn it? Yeah, typically it's every two to three years for a prairie, but we can burn whatever we want to, honestly. Morris Bean we do every other year. When you burn it fall, it's 18, okay. 19, it's been over a year. But we're happy to do it if you guys want everything we can do to keep these weeds down. And that way we can get the little scrub trees that start growing up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Add you to the list. You had to take mm -hmm. care of a lot of them. That was you know, a while back. Yeah, it's really fun. If you can. If not, oh, yeah, we'll yeah. deal with it. Yeah, we'll do that and add it to the more screen list. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else, Mr. Cemetery? No. All right, Mr. Rowe, what you doing? Uh, let's see. We get your estimate for our chip ceiling falls. We had yeah. our annual road tour last Monday. Um, and I didn't bring the list, but that's okay. Yeah, we're going to chip <laughs> three roads. Snip, random, and spalane. Snips, it's about 25. Uh, is that right? That's, I'm throwing in my wedge too. Mm -hmm. This be around 25 or so. So 25,000 per SNP road. And then Branham will come in around 4,300 plus the wedging, probably 6,000, 4,500, something like that. Maybe. A little bit of wedge. How much are talking about overlaying it? 45,000. Oh, 45,000. For the overlay. Yeah. So I think we should go with the chip deal. Yeah, probably. 6,000 mm -hmm. You said you were capping that at 30. <coughs> That's what my estimate was. Yeah. Well, that's the figure it is. Like mm -hmm. So, Branham again would be. Chip seal with some wedges. For a, roughly. Around 6,000. It's 500, 6,000. Pitting. And then Spalane will come in about 2,100. Mm -hmm. so, and then our fall beam is going to come in a little higher because we're getting a lot of fall. Yeah. It's around 54. Mm -hmm. So, it's about 80. 88, 85, 88. Mm -hmm. But then that's figured high on the notes. 4,000. For fog seal, but it could come in. Last year was only a dollar per year, but mm -hmm. the papers were quite like 40. So mm -hmm. that's why I mean, the price could be lower the time we get to it. So I figure about 88. Maybe. Well, apparently, oil is going down, down, down. It's really tanking. So I'm hoping maybe the price. I'm always kind of high on my ass. Mm -hmm. So to clarify, we send the linear feet and all that to the county engineer. And they come up with a depending on how much a shared price or chip seal and if everybody's in a lot it lowers the price. So the numbers you've got are basically based on last year. Or right, right, or the current. They're all like the same stuff, mm -hmm. about fifty for chip seal, about forty for this next. It's 
square error. That's how I figured it. But it, it, I'm probably going to get over it. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. And I think that's uh, the depth of that discussion. I, go I didn't do the numbers. arithmetic. If you added up your estimates, what would it be? Around 85 to 88,000, somewhere there. So, that includes my wedgie. And we talked to talked about hopefully spending not much more than 100 or so. Uh, yeah, we're not going to do that. Yeah, well, you, you always get carried away with that batch of stuff. And Wait. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Guardrail. Well, I'm going to do some guardrail. <laughs> I hope was, so. That was, that was cost of Winter's not over yet. You don't know what the damage is going to be by the uh, uh, Are you diligently? Real quick, before I forget this, are you diligently working on the uh, uh, maintenance uh, report for the Cook and Cemetery? I am. Can you submit it sooner than later? Sooner. Be soon. Okay. I'm, I'm in the middle of it, so okay. I'll get my burial, and get all my burial this tomorrow. Uh, I, I, I highly, mm -hmm. later this week. I got my ink today. Printer ink. No, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I print now. All right. What, what was your passing? Reference to work in Bath Township? Is that a joke? Or? Work by Bath Township. Oh, by Bath. Okay. They, well, with Bath Township, I should say. Mm -hmm. not, they you know, they, mm -hmm. they uh, team up to put down some blacktop. Yes. Yeah, they had a the machine. They, they got a machine. They had a machine and a truck. They all. And the machine works now. Yes. Actually, it worked a lot of nicer. Good. Uh, that's uh, I think I was I'm gonna try to do the guardrail in Brian Park soon too to get those pieces replaced so you see I got them from it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not raining too bad we can do that. Mm -hmm. Who put down the stone? Uh Zini Hall we we spread it spread it on. We were highly qualified ruby mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Look, look nice. Mm -hmm. Um thank you. You're welcome. Why do you use the stuff with dust in it? Uh, I mean, I realize it packs, but it's, it's a mess. It packs. Yeah, there's stuff won't pack now. You gotta have some yeah. powder. Yeah. It's 411. You know, 411 has it. It's always top coat. Seems like with four feet of base underneath it. Yeah, but it breaks down. It you push, know, and you run down. over it, and rocks break. That's life stuff. Mm -hmm. you, know, you run over it, run over it, breaks down, becomes dirt underneath. It doesn't become dirt. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it becomes, you know, it, it, it breaks depends down. on what the what soil is underneath it, how it mixes with it or not. It's all pit run underneath is what the yes. yard was laid out as. Yes. So. And then you shouldn't get too much. I know it gets a little dusty, but it, it'll settle down. All right. Um, we could chip seal it. That's true. Anything else for um, the road administrator? Mark? Yeah. No. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I think we'll move to the fist officer's report for the evening. Well, I have a little amendment to a couple of temporary appropriations resolution. If you want to consider that. I shall. Okay. We shall. Uh, you want me to read it again? I've yes, heard it I would. a thousand times. Yes, I would, I would like to hear it. Okay, it's resolution. <laughs> Maybe it's time to music. 2020-08, Amendment of Temporary Appropriations, whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township. <clears throat> now, therefore, the trustees authorize an amendment to the following temporary appropriations. Uh, in advertising, I need to increase by $100, <clears throat> and in buildings, we increase by 450 Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> is there a motion to adopt 20, uh, Resolution 2020-08? <clears throat> There's a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Any further discussion regarding that resolution? Hearing none, may we vote please. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. And um, we've got uh, some preliminary figures to look at appropriation wise mm -hmm. for 2020. Okay. Um, Are there any questions regarding those, uh, uh, those appropriation? Numbers? Just for the record, what's the timeline? When do we have to have this in? Uh, April 1st is um, when the auditors want to see our permanent appropriations. <clears throat> I did um, 
make one change um, to our appropriations in that um, when we pay our we generally have in the years past have paid our volunteers out of the fire fund, and I suggested to Colin um, that maybe we start paying our volunteers out of the EMS billing fund simply because there's a little bit of wiggle room financially in the EMS um, fund, and which you know it's not a significant change, but you know wherever you can wiggle, you might as well. So um, that, that's that's. Pretty much it. Everything is pretty much, you know, based on what we end up spending in each line item at, at the end of the year. Um, and I did, Don, take note of your, um, um, you know, embarrassment <laughs> uh, uh, comment. So I tried to add a little bit. You know, yeah, do an arbitrary five percent or yeah, something. Yeah, well, yeah, I just, you just add a little bit, and you know, and, and of course, what we she adds and I cut. <laughs> <laughs> it's a vicious cycle. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, she, so. <laughs> she alluded to it last meeting, and I, I'm not sure it, 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 it was strong enough, her response, that you know, it's, it's very important for us as a, as a small organization and a hands-on organization that, that we know the amount of money that we have to spend, and we appropriate to that level and not over <coughs> for a couple of reasons. One, you get yourself in trouble. And yeah, two, personally, you're not allowed. Yeah. You're not allowed. The auditor will... Uh, will kick it back. Mm -hmm. So as much as it would be nice to throw, you know, a 10% or whatever cushion on it, usually we're so close, you know, we're cutting to get to that, that level that we don't have that freedom, at least in the general fund, at least in the, well, the funds that, uh, the funds that are generated by property tax as opposed to the gas tax and permissives and those things that, that uh, don't tell David Graham, but he can't, he can't touch those. He can't take mm -hmm. those funds back. Uh, and uh, honestly, you know, I mean, I, it's, I mean, I made my, I made my point yeah, last and, time. And, but and, and I'll on, go my, on my part, I, I can, you know, I can look in November mm -hmm. and at how things are going on. And specifically, it was like generally it was salary related or Medicare or Social Security by a couple dollars or short here and there. And, and um, so I can look at that and maybe you know just in November or early December you know, look at the numbers and if I can see that we're maybe going to come up short, just look at it right then and then add the money, you know, and then we won't have these last minute, you know, Christmas day. <laughs> not really, but you know. It, it you doesn't know. hurt me. I'm just, no, I'm I mean, not used to this. Well, I don't like it either, so yeah. anyway. But we're going to, we'll work harder at making that right. You're, if easier. I understand right, you're more or less forced to come out very close to what you get because if you don't, it's either you can't go over, and if you go under, well, you didn't need it all. Right. Exactly. So you, you, yeah, you we've play been, these we've been games. accused of having a slush fund. So mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, whatever. It's all okay. Good. It's all good. So I don't know. Okay. For Colin happened to leave for some reason, but <laughs> can you, he hears every word. Can you? Do you want to? Did you look? You have a chance to look at the appropriations? I'm replying to an email from Emily. Uh, <laughs> Appropriations. No, I haven't seen that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm going to look at it. Okay. All right. Well, Not right now, though. Obviously, you're Oh, busy. okay. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, I haven't, I'll take a look at it tomorrow. For my purposes, I, I reviewed it and I have made my changes. And my, or I mean, my suggested yeah, changes. So. Right, yeah. And, and, and I did incorporate the, she those has incorporated changes into, some of those. So, yeah, we had conversations. <laughs> All right. We will take this up again in mm -hmm. our next meeting. It will not. It will not go away. No. Nope. Uh, at least Cannot. quietly. At least not quietly. Allowed. We like to follow the rules. Okay. Let's see. Is I don't there, have anything else. Is there anything left on the agenda? No. Uh, what, what else is left? New oh, no. oh. On Margaret's agenda. Oh. oh. I'm not. <laughs> no. <laughs> still. No. After Margaret, we. No. Won't. I'm. I, I'm finished. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Let's see. Is there anything left? Um. We have a zoning inspector. Zoning. What's zoning? It's zoning? Mm -hmm. It's a kind of wine. No, that's zoning. Yeah. No. <laughs> Thank you. I forswore, or whatever the right term is, this at the first meeting of the year so that it didn't drag on forever. Um, <clears throat> and there'll, there will be copies for you and you and once I'm done. This is just my standard, 
not quite boilerplate, but close to that, and report for the past year. Um, 21 zoning permits, which is almost twice as many as the previous year, for a total building value of almost $3 million, which is interesting because that is the highest it's been since 2005. Uh, but it mostly seems to reflect that people spend more money on buildings, not that we're doing more numbers of buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, the permit fees that that generated were $1,674.50. One home replacement, this is someone tearing down a house and building another one. Four actual new homes and one temporary home. This is where a, a home had major structural damage. They had to live in a, in a portable home until the house was repaired. Five residential additions, seven accessory structures, um, two permits actually. They, they changed their mind and came back and did a second permit on an agritourism building expansion. I call it that. It's, it's, the, it's the home on the what was the pit stick farm on East Eden Road. Mm -hmm. It's now um, a dietitian's um, offices, and uh, BZA saw fit to call that agritourism. Um, and the Boy Scouts are putting up a new bathhouse. That doesn't fit in any of the normal <laughs> categories. Um, also, this year, uh, development in the township was fairly well balanced between east and west. Usually, most of it is occurring in the east over mm -hmm. Cedarville expansion. We've, yeah. we've, we've been more threatened by Cedarville than we ever have by Fairborn, yeah. so to speak, although people always worry that somehow Fairborn is going to roll over us. Um, uh, typical three driveway permits, a sign permit, two survey records. The surveys have created two new potential building lots. Um, not a lot of activity in that direction. Um, the Zoning Commission is still modifying the code to either update in general, just because things are out of date, or to make it match the com comprehensive plan. Um, it's interesting to me, there's more information now on the, from the county on, for example, knowing how a piece of property is zoned. So I don't get as many of those questions, but I get more questions about, well, what can you do in this zone? <laughs> used to be that the uh, you know, people assessing property always wanted to know the zone, and sometimes mm -hmm. they still call for that. But um, people that are purchasing property and want to know what they can do and what they can't do. Fairly, fairly steady um, advising going on that way. And then as you all know, um, the, the agrarian operation on Dayton Hill Springs Road. Um, I, I labeled it an ongoing zoning challenge as they frequently change uses that may not be appropriate on land zoned for agriculture. And of course, part of that is wrestling with what agriculture is. And Ohio defines that fairly liberally, but there are still boundaries on what you can call agriculture. I'm noticing we're about 15 or 20 cars out there, most all day to day, <coughs> doing some agricultural related <laughs> activity we hope. Yeah. I don't I don't I try not to to like follow the website and look at everything but you know what I what I encourage them to do is is anytime they do something that they might have the least little bit of question about is this an actual agricultural activity is just ask first so that I don't hear about it afterwards or in the middle of it say you shouldn't be doing that. Um, I mean, we're, we're still working back and forth on whether having a composting facility is an agricultural activity. Aspects of it are agricultural and aspects of it are not. Sorting that out, um, it, uh, the information I'm getting back from our prosecutor's office is, no, not everything they're doing is agricultural. Yeah, you might think of it in the standpoint of, if you were had a compost pile in, in your yard, fine. You're, you're, you're supporting your own garden and everything is cool. If you were selling that compost to somebody else, well, is that an agricultural activity? <laughs> or, oh, now you're manufacturing fertilizer. Well, most farmers don't do that. They, 
In other words, they get their fertilizer from somebody else, and that's not considered to be an agricultural activity. Um, but, and in the same way, if, if you were making compost from everything that was going on in your farm and then selling it, that might be agricultural. But when you're acquiring materials from off the farm right. to make a product on the farm and sell it, then is that activity on the farm agriculture? And um, who knows? Um, as an aside, I just got word that, that there was actually a court decision in Greene County saying weddings are not agritourism. That's actually gone that far. And, well, let me just... The, yeah, is the, you, the report I basically be, told you. Did they expect that to be appealed? I don't know, but but for the we're going to have a zoning inspectors meeting for the first time in a long time, mm -hmm. and that's going to be one of the updates at that that meeting, as well as as the information about Roth Townships rezoning to inhibit development. You got um, that. Did yeah, I got that, that copy okay. that you gave me of, of what had gone through regional planning. Yeah. Yeah. And Devin and I had talked about that when it first came up, but then they sort of proceeded on their own, and now we're, we're hearing back from it. But they also worked with the prosecutor's office to try to make sure that they weren't doing anything that would be challenged. Yeah. So um, it'll be interesting to hear all the details about that and then, and then be able to relay it accurately to our zoning commission. Of course the demographics of Ross Township are so oh, very good. Yeah. Oh no, you, you can't. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, if somebody took a knife and cut Green County north out down the middle, mm -hmm. the, the, the western half of Green County is so different from the eastern half, mm -hmm. and it gets more progressively more different as you go further east and, and south, and less different as you mm -hmm. go west. No, we've got a, quite a variety going on mm -hmm. in terms of, of Beaver Creek being practically full-scale development to Ross where there's almost none mm -hmm. going on at all anyway. Mm -hmm. But I guess each of us sort of want to keep keep everything the same as it is, mm -hmm. which is an interesting concept when you get to Miami Township, which is just a little bit of growth. Yeah, it's caught in the middle. Caught in the middle. <clears throat> I hope no one discovers us. I just learned that in northeast Clark County has been, quote, discovered by people who live in, work in Columbus mm -hmm. as being a, a shorter commute than many, many of the developments that are closer to yeah. Columbus, yeah. and suddenly housing is turning over, you know, in days when wow. it comes on the market and developers are now mm -hmm. sniffing around. That, that came through the land trust, but, um, it, you know, Fred Legg always points out that he's got a much shorter commute to work over at the base than many of his fellow people, but they somehow never see Miami Township as, as you know, the place to go or the developers go. And it could be scary if anybody ever said, oh, we could sell houses to people that work at the base in Miami Township. You ever drive down 675 at 7.50 in the morning? Mm -hmm. There's at least five miles of, of, of bumper to bumper. bumper to bumper waiting to get off at that. Yep, I couldn't imagine doing that every single yeah. day. Uh, All of us who have lived with, with a, a few blocks of commuting, yeah, don't can't begin to understand that. But anyway, that's the the gist of last year. As I say, um, a little bit busier as as far as things go, but. Nothing that says there's a trend going on in, in one way or the other, yeah, yeah, which is much pretty much been the case the whole time I've been the zoning inspector. I wouldn't predict what was going to happen the next year. Any questions for Richard? You have a copy of that? Yeah, you get. I just Thank I you. wanted to have my like a copy to look at while I did the report. That was magic. <laughs> Any questions for Richard? Passing across. Okay. Yes, Thank you. Done. Mark? Okay. Uh, thank you. Was that it? That, that, okay. Well, I mean, the Zoning Commission had a, had, did have a meeting in January, and they spent most of the time sort of 
summarizing last year and, and electing officers, which are the same as they were the previous year, and saying, okay, and now we're going to get to work. But uh, with a little luck, there will actually be a quorum in February as well. Yeah. When is that meeting going to be? It's the third Tuesday. It's always the third Tuesday. <coughs> I can't Hopefully. rattle off the, the day. All right, well, let's see. We're down to hmm, uh, standing commission reports, which would be next time. And uh, Margaret, as long as I have you here, would you? Do you need me to make a change? Yeah, would you re remove the MVRPC TAC committee line mm -hmm. and the economic sustainability committee line? Please. Thank you. Uh, new business, kind of, sort of. Um, if anybody can think of a <laughs> replacement for the work that Jim Hanna does on the Grinnell Mill or his function, um, let me know. Is, is he still doing hands-on work on the mill? He still does the bookkeeping and the oh, I've been work. on the structure. Uh huh. Yeah, as necessary. Which fortunate is it's not too much. Not too much. But, yeah. But he takes. I'm just looking for replacing him with someone who has some building skills and some bookkeeping skills. Yeah, and and some volunteering skills. Well, yeah, willing to yeah, willing to do it for a minimal salary. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, oh, I'm going to go back to zoning for a second, and, and I think you brought this up as we were doing the road tour. Any thought given to with the with the transformation of Camp Clifton from the whatever they were? It wasn't. Camp, it was a Camp close, Green. Camp Green. Camp Green. It was, it was the, the girls. We're talking about the land across yes, the Grinnell Road. Yeah. That was the Girl Scouts, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe so. It was. But now, apparently, Antioch is renting that property for money. It's owned by the Glen Helen Association. It's owned okay. by the Glen Helen Association. The Glen Helen Association is, is renting it out. Well, I don't know how, I mean, I don't know what they are doing with it. They, there was, when that, that transfer took place, and that's been two, three years ago, um, they were trying to decide what buildings were worth keeping and, and what weren't, and, mm -hmm. and whether they had the money to do the repairs and all of that before they, could even consider using it, and there were issues with water. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not, up, I have not heard any information about that recently. I can mm -hmm. find out. Okay, well, I don't know if it just happens to come okay. to you. Well, I, I, I know who to talk to, so next time the opportunity comes up, I'll, I'll ask. Yeah. There's a lodge back there, are they yeah. a big lodge? Out yeah, there's there? a big lodge mm -hmm. building, and there were. Two dormitory buildings that weren't in such great shape, and there was the caretaker's house right mm -hmm. as you came in, and it seems to me there were one or two other a storage buildings. Well, there's, there's, the yeah, there's a garage storage type building. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, then it was it was a developed mm -hmm. area up on top. It was down the hillside to the river. That was the, the wilder area. Well, they had some recreational things set up, like a rope course or. Some other things like that too. I just thought maybe we quote catch it before it got into some large operation. Yeah, yeah I, I don't. Think that's know. where it went. I don't know. Yeah, I. I think I think you're right. It's it's one where I need to have a conversation with the right person to see what the the intentions are at this point. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sorry about going back. Um, so. Any other new business? I have one piece of old business and would request an, uh, okay, an executive session for purposes of uh, discussing real estate. Is there a, a motion to uh, move the executive so session? So move. At 6 o'clock. Is there, is there a second? Yes. Uh, may we vote on that, please? Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. And similar to last time, I see no reason that the, we, we can't dismiss <laughs> the 
audience, to the participants, because we will come back out and adjourn basically uh, for the day uh, with no expected uh, uh, decisions anticipated. Okay. Okay, then say goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Thank you all. <laughs>